Welcome to this module. This is the first in a series of three modules about the risks and outcomes of out-of-school suspension, especially for children who are involved in the child welfare system and the impact that you can have on these issues. This online learning module has been developed under the auspices of federal Title IV funding, Minnesota Department of Human Services, and the Center for Advanced Studies in Child Welfare at the School of Social Work and the College of Education and Human Development. This first module would be an introduction to the topic of out-of-school suspension and how it relates to these other issues. We will start to answer the following questions. What is out-of-school suspension? How, when, and why is it used? And what are the problems with out-of-school suspension? Is it effective at improving behavior? And what other outcomes are associated with it? Next, we'll talk about who is most affected by out-of-school suspension, who is at higher risk, and why is all of this important? What is the bigger picture that out-of-school suspension is connected to? So first, what is out-of-school suspension? Out-of-school suspension is an exclusionary disciplinary measure used in schools. It can be a response to a range of different behaviors. One of the most common reasons given for suspending a child out of school is insubordination. This means behavior that is seen as disrespectful or not following directions. Students report being suspended for insubordination when they have gone to the bathroom without being given permission or putting their head down on their desk in a tired manner. Other reasons for being suspended include fighting or substance use. Some students have mentioned that they were suspended for, quote, looking high or, quote, smelling like marijuana, even if they did not have any illegal substances on their person. Finally, any smaller misbehavior done repeatedly could also result in suspension. Suspension can last for up to 10 days, during which a student is excluded from going to school or participating in any school activities. So what are the problems with out-of-school suspension? One of the most important things to know about out-of-school suspension is that it has not been shown to be effective at changing behavior. Behavior does not tend to improve after students are suspended. And in fact, students are often suspended multiple times. Many involved in this process, including students and teachers, have reported that they feel that out-of-school suspension does not resolve the underlying issues that caused the problem which led to suspension. Out-of-school suspension separates students from the potentially positive influence of teachers and their peers at school, and students report feeling excluded or looked down upon by other students when they return from suspension. So the exclusion lasts beyond the time period of the suspension itself. Not only has out-of-school suspension been shown to be ineffective at changing behavior, it also has been associated with other negative outcomes. For example, out-of-school suspension has been associated with negative physical and mental health outcomes. This makes sense as we were just discussing how social exclusion arises as a result of out-of-school suspension, and social inclusion is a major determinant of mental and physical health. Students who feel disconnected and excluded from their peers tend to have poorer health outcomes. Also, as we will talk about in a moment, academic attainment is also impacted by out-of-school suspension and is also a determinant of health. So that's another way that out-of-school suspension may indirectly negatively affect health. As I just mentioned, out-of-school suspension has a negative impact on academic outcomes. Students who are suspended tend to have poorer academic performance than those who are not, and this makes sense as missing school tends to have a negative effect on academic performance. It was also found that students who are suspended are less likely to finish high school, and this connects to the bigger picture issue of school pushout, which we will discuss later. In addition, it's important to note that some studies have matched students who were suspended with students who were not suspended on their academic performance prior to the time when some of them were suspended. So among the students who had similar academic achievement before they were suspended, those who were suspended out of school had poorer outcomes following the suspension. So while of course, that does not prove that suspension is the cause of the decline in academic outcomes, it does point to OSS as a strong possible cause. Out-of-school suspension is also related to justice system involvement. Students who experienced out-of-school suspension were more likely to have contact with the juvenile justice system and later in adulthood with the justice system in general. 
Out-of-school suspension also was positively associated with more severe outcomes in adulthood, such as incarceration. This shows how out-of-school suspension may play a role in the bigger picture of the school-prison nexus, something we will discuss later as well. Not only is out-of-school suspension more related to justice involvement and criminal involvement, it is also related to higher rates of criminal victimization. Now that we've talked about some of the possible outcomes of out-of-school suspension, we should also talk about what makes students more likely to be at risk for out-of-school suspension and these outcomes as a result. Disparities in school discipline along race or ethnicity has been well documented, including in Minnesota. Several studies have found that these disparities persist even when controlling for other variables, like behavioral severity or number of infractions. BIPOC students, and specifically Black students and Indigenous students, are suspended significantly more often than white students, sometimes several times more often. Black boys are the group with the highest rate of suspension, though it is important to remember that Black girls also experience disproportionality in discipline and are affected by the negative outcomes of suspension as well. Another disparity in out-of-school suspension is along the lines of disability. Students who are identified as having disabilities, especially emotional and behavioral disabilities, are more likely to be suspended than students who are not designated as having a disability. Again, this means that students with disabilities are more likely to experience the negative outcomes that come along with out-of-school suspension than students without disabilities. Finally, the last disparity that we will discuss in this module is along the lines of the child welfare system. Children who have been involved in the child welfare system, such as their family receiving a report or investigation from Child Protective Services, are more likely to experience out-of-school suspension than those who do not have any such involvement. Specifically, out-of-home placement is highly related to out-of-school suspension, and a higher number of CPS reports was associated with higher levels of out-of-school suspension. So these children who may already be vulnerable in a number of ways are also experiencing the social exclusion and accompanying negative outcomes that go along with out-of-school suspension. So why should you care about out-of-school suspension? Why is all of this information important to know? Out-of-school suspension is part of a larger systemic issue. As you can see, and as we've been discussing, the groups who are at higher risk for out-of-school suspension, students with disabilities, BIPOC students, students who are involved in the child welfare system, and students who belong to more than one of those groups, are also at a higher risk for the negative outcomes of out-of-school suspension. Two related theories help us understand the way that these factors are connected, school push-out and the school-prison nexus. Out-of-school suspension is one factor in what is called school push-out. School push-out describes the phenomenon of students being discouraged from continuing in school, and due to a combination of lack of academic support, lack of support from peers and teachers, and a belief that being in school is not worthwhile. This can stem from teachers directly telling students they will not graduate or succeed, setting expectations lowered for certain students, or labeling certain students as a problem. And this has been documented to happen most often with students of color and students with disabilities. Exclusionary discipline, like out-of-school suspension, contributes to students not feeling like they belong at school. School push-out contributes to another troubling phenomenon, the school-prison nexus. The school-prison nexus describes the connection between schools and the carceral justice system and the inequities that exist in the public education system in the U.S. that causes primarily BIPOC students to become involved in the justice system. The most apparent example is the presence of law enforcement within schools and the use of law enforcement referrals as discipline, but these are not the only examples of the school-prison nexus. School push-out is a predictor of justice involvement, and as we discussed above, out-of-school suspension is also a predictor of justice involvement and incarceration. Students who are suspended feel disconnected from their peers and feel less supported by teachers, who may be treating them as scapegoats or problem students. This can result in poorer academic performance, not finishing high school, and ultimately higher likelihood of being involved in the justice system or incarceration. 
Now for a bit of review of this module. First, I'm going to ask you some basic questions about what you learned in this module. Then I'll ask you to journal your thoughts or discuss with someone else. So what is out of school suspension? How would you describe it in your own words? What are some of the reasons given for suspension? Does out of school suspension tend to result in improved behavior? What are some possible outcomes of out of school suspension? What groups of students are at higher risk for out of school suspension? Now for some discussion and or journaling. If there's someone you can discuss these with, like a colleague or someone else doing these modules with you, that is excellent. Otherwise, feel free to just journal your answers somewhere that you can come back to in the future. And you can pause the video after each question to discuss or journal. What do you think about the use of out of school suspension in public schools? Why are the outcomes and risk factors of out of school suspension important? Do you think there's anything you can do in your role to have an impact on school push out, the school prison nexus, or any outcomes of out of school suspension? Related to that last question, we will spend a lot more time discussing your potential role in these issues in the last module. So don't worry if your answer right now is not fully formed or if you have some questions. In this module, we talked about some of the risks and outcomes for out of school suspension. In the next module, we'll be going more in depth about those risks and outcomes with two studies. You might have been wondering whether the risk factors like disability, BIPOC identity, and child welfare system involvement intersect in the ways that they affect out-of-school suspension. For example, do BIPOC students who are involved in child welfare have increased risks of out-of-school suspension beyond those of BIPOC students who are not involved in the child welfare system or white students who are involved in the child welfare system? That is a question that we sought to answer in our out-of-school suspension risk study, which we will discuss in the next module. Maybe you're also wondering whether child welfare involved students, BIPOC students, and or students with disabilities are more likely to experience the negative outcomes of suspension than other groups who are also suspended. That's another question we sought to answer in our out-of-school suspension outcome study. Join us in module two for a deeper dive into those questions. And here are our references.